Okay, welcome back, dear friends. Today, I'd like to continue our series of Van Hub. The virtual machine would be sunset decoy. I will put the link into the description section below so that you can download this image. Before we begin today's video, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate your help and support. So now let's get started. To save time, I have already imported the virtual machine image into the virtual box, and uh, now we can go into the Kali Linux. As you can see over here, we have already identified the IP address of the virtual machine as two hundred fifty-four. Of course, you can do that by a lot of different tools like. Net Discover, which is my favorite tool in this case, and、uh, I also did the Nmap scanning. I did the Sync scan, the Version scan, Script scan, and the Comprehensive scan by specifying the option of dash p dash. From the Nmap scanning results, as you can see over here, the two open ports on the target. Or the virtual machine, the first one is twenty two, which is running SSH service, and also the actual version information, including the number, the version number is displayed over here. Of course, as we know, this version of SSH doesn't have any vulnerability. What we can exploit. From the perspective of penetration, and the second open port is eighty, which is running HTTP surface and also the version information,、uh, which is Apache Apache two, and from the map also we can know、uh, that we have on the target or the on the site has one file. The name is. Save dot zip. Of course, naturally, what we are going to do next is to do some further more emulation for the AT port. Now let's fire up our browser of Firefox, and、uh, uh, we need to refresh、uh, the the browser, and、uh, now we can get the latest. A content of this virtual machine, because I have I have mentioned before,、uh, because of my environment,、um, very often the IP address for the virtual machine will be two hundred and fifty four. So when we、uh, use the browser to access the web service, we need to refresh the browser and get the. Current and the latest、uh, page, and here, as you can see, there is one file save dot zip. Of course, we can download、uh, this file onto our Kali Linux, and、uh, no problem. And we can uh, move uh, this file from to our working directory, and、uh, now we can. Uncomp decompress, excuse me,、uh, this file. But it's password protected, and、uh, we need to use John the Reaper to crack the password for this file, or for this archive. And before we use John the Reaper, we need to use the、uh, the utility or command zip to jump and save. And、uh, we can redirect to the save hash、uh, file. Yeah, no problem. And then we can use the John the Reaper save hash. Yeah, very quick because the password is very simple and、uh, is a bit short in names. Okay, it's okay. And now we can. Unzip、uh, this file, and can by putting the 
password. Now we got the content of this archive or this compressed file, and we can go to the uh, etc directory, and there's some files like uh, password. So uh, now uh, at this point, we have already know the user names of the virtual machine. For example, the this one. And uh, this is any normal user except root user on the target. And also we have the shadow file. And uh, this is encrypted password. So again, we need to use the John the Reaper to crack the password for the user. Yeah, this user, the user name is very long. And uh, how to do it? We first we need to use the unshadow a command to combine the password file and the shadow file, and we can uh, need redirect or output the another file. Yeah, no problem. And then we can use the John the Reaper. So. Now uh, the John the Reaper will crack the password. Of course, I think yeah, we have already got uh, the password for the this uh, user user, and uh, the password is also very simple. And uh, now we can log in. Uh, this target, and we can paste in here. And specify the target IP address. Yeah, we need to as usual. We need to remove because of the same reason, and re need to remove uh, the the older keys. And we can paste in here. And now we can log in again. And uh, yeah, accept. Continue, and the password is server. Yeah, no problem. And uh, as you can see, uh, although we have already successfully logged in as uh, this user, but the shell is restrict a uh, bash shell. And uh, uh, you you can check uh, whether or uh, whether we can run any command like id. Your yeah, id can and uh, list the content. And we can get the user flag here. But we even cannot run the command of a cat. How about the more? Also cannot work. And also like less user, but not found. So. I think now we need to escape this restrict shell first. And how to do it? Of course, there's some cheat sheets about how we can escape from the restrict shells. Normally, the first way I always to try when we uh, attempt to escape uh, such restrict shell is by specifying the terminal, like a bin. And the password is a server, but uh, it uh, it's not working at all. And uh, the another another way is the bash no profile. And uh, now we can see whether this way can work. And the server, yeah, now we can uh, successfully log in as the this user. And to see whether we can run the like uh, cat command, but we still can we cannot still run the command like a cat. So we can check the our pass environmental variable. As you can see, uh, this pass variable is very. Uh, very different from our yo-yo uh, pass variable. It doesn't include the uh, the normal um, 
normal executable pass. For example, as we can uh, check the, our kind links, uh, like uh, echo our pass. As you can see, doesn't have such a directory or pass which include the commands like cat, like uh, like more. So we need to change this, uh, change the pass variable on the virtual machine. And this will be very easy. We can set pass and we can paste in here. And now we can append our existing pass variable. Yeah, no problem. Now we can cut the user flag. Yeah, no problem. So I now we need to do some uh, furthermore immersion or basic immersion. But I can tell you, for example, we can run the sudo uh, list to see whether this user have or can run some commands with sudo privilege. But uh, as, you can, as you can see, uh, the result, the sorry user may not run sudo. It's okay. Also, we can run the uh, find command to see whether we can find the commands which has which have SUID bit, and then if it has a such a command, and then we can utilize such commands to elevate our privilege, and uh, we can do redirect error to the black hole. Yeah, but nothing special uh, from the this command uh, result. Also, you can uh, upload the Olympia's shell script to this virtual machine and then run uh, this Olympia's shell script to see whether uh, can we can find the vulnerable uh, vulnerability or misconfiguration. But... Uh, I can tell you when I did uh, this, uh, this uh, use this shell script. I think you know this script very well, and uh, I cannot get any useful information from uh, this shell script. So what can we do next? If you uh, content or list the content of the, this directory, there is a very su suspicious executable file. Honey, the port decoy, and uh, this uh, this file ownership is loot, so we must uh, pay close attention to this file. And also, there is another directory we can go to this directory to see whether we can find something. And uh, there is, I uh, can we can cut the page, but nothing because the file size is zero. And also have a logs file, and we can cut the log txt. So I think from this, of course, the uh, a bit uh, lot output uh, from, and uh, apparently, apparently this log is generated, was generated by the PSPY a command. I think you know these two uh, already. But I think the point for this output is this one. As you can see, uh, so the target may be running the check loot kit. You know, the loot kit is some sort of a backdoor. And uh, this uh, two will identify or discover whether the local machine has a uh, loot kits so we need to keep it, keep this in mind and uh, uh, also uh, of course to to demonstrate uh, in more clear way i need to open up another tab and go to our working directory uh, decoy and uh, 
we can log in uh, this user. So we get the two shells or two sessions. SSH and uh, the IP address. And we need to specify T option bash no profile and the password is a server yeah no problem and also we need to change the the pass valuable because we didn't write this command the the the, the pass just we did before we didn't write the pass valuable into the a bash rc file so for each shell or for each session we need to do we need to do the same thing the pass and uh, we can oh sorry we can And uh, we can use our use this as a, as a reference. You know the Linux is very similar, and uh, we could just uh, put it in here and uh, append existing pass available. And now we are in the normal shell, and we can cut the content. So I think the first thing we need to check is just now we have already identified maybe on the background the the has process which is check root kit and we can use ps command and grab check root but nothing found which is related to the check root kit um, two. So I think now we need to, we can go back to our home directory. As you can see, we can run this. So this, uh, I think this, this file or this executable will do some tasks, for example, like display the date. Yeah, and we need to run again. You can try it uh, different options. And also, I think you have noticed uh, the version of this one. We can make a copy. And uh, Exploit So I think uh, this version of a check root kit uh, does have a vulnerability for local privilege escalation and uh, as you as you scroll down here are some steps to uh to uh, on how to elevate privilege the first step would be put an executable file named update. So this should be executable. And then run the check root kit because I think if we go back to our, uh, the first, yeah, I think this one, I think, I, I think the five, the option five launch antivirus again will uh, will use check root kit too to do some antiviruses again and uh, if you want to uh, if you want to test this I, I, I just uh, tell you how, how I do it I did it for example we can echo a very random string and to the to the temp temporary directory and uh, the the file name must be update right and we need to make uh, our 
update executable. But now you know if we check if we check the the process. You already? Yeah. Has already ch chat load kit. So it means that uh, it's working. But now uh, what we have already put is useless string. And we need to replace uh, this string uh, by our reverse shell command. I have already prepared uh, this reverse shell command. Of course, you can you can get that from like a pen test monkey, uh, cheat sheets, cheat sheets, and uh, so now we can put, we can echo. Right, and uh, temp. Okay, we can. Yeah, no problem, and we. Okay, and now we need to set up the listener. Also, you can check whether yeah or no. We need to run uh, out the this honey and select option file. This will launch. This will launch check loot kit, and uh, this check loot kit version. I mean the zero dot four line has vulnerability, and uh, and then this will uh, as we follow the steps which comes from the exploit DB, and we'll run the check loot kit. We'll run the command which is inside our updated update a file, and we now run the option file. And to see, yeah, we have already got the another a shell, and from the banner we can know we are loot user. And now we can cut the loot flag here. So yeah, that's it. We have already successfully completed this virtual machine, in which we uh, have already got the loot shell and got the loot flag here. So that's all I'd like to demonstrate in this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.